Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team is currently excavating the SoftKey Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description listing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's what our diggers have for week 275. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now, without further ado, let's get to it. First up, we have a team dig from Sane of Streets and Christian Topnik. Win games backslash WC backslash Kala. So for some reason, a part of me feels like maybe we've played something like this before. I don't know why. Um, looking for Kala. There's it. There it is. Um, help file and a very small executable. The executable is 40 kilobytes. Anyway, it's Kala is an ancient game of skill and strategy that you play against your computer. To learn more about the game, select the topic below. So the game consists of a board with two sides on it, one beside the other. Each player controls one side of the board. Okay. Each side contains seven areas. Six of the areas are called pits. They contain the points that the players compete for. The seventh area is called the Kala. Each Kala contains the total points for a side. Kalas are initially empty. Yeah, I feel like we've played something like this before. Also, there doesn't appear to be any about information, ordering info, or stuff like that in this help file. So maybe there's some in the game? I don't know. Um, okay. I was about to say it doesn't maximize, except it's already pretty big, so does it get smaller? It does. Okay. So, good start. Game, the game's graphics scale depending on how much of the, how much of the screen it's taking up. Um, we do have an about here. So, 1.0 by Island Software from 94, and registration information. So apparently the person who made this is asking for $9.95 US, so $10 for registration, and we don't actually have a name of anybody who made this, so Island Software is all we got to go on. Okay, it also looks like there's a skill level in the menu here, which is set to beginner by default, and a speed, which is set to fast by default. So let's see how this goes. So new game. Um, okay, so it's telling me that Everything here is a valid move. Okay, so if I go like that. Okay. So yeah, we have indeed played a game like this before, where you're basically picking up all the all the stuff in a pile and then it spreads across all the piles all the piles ahead. And then from what I understood in the rules, you also get an extra turn if the last point to go into one of these goes into your Kala, so this would be ours right here, so... Oh no, wait, I can't select the ones down here anymore. Interesting, so I was actually selecting which side I wanted to play when I made my first move here. So yeah, because I selected up here, I guess I'm the the red and yellow ones, and the AI is the blue ones. So let's go with this. Okay, and I think my next move is going to be this eight. Now I think I'm going to play like this nine right here. So I'm trying to think in terms of trying to get extra turns, because I know you get an extra turn if your last, if the last one you that gets placed ends up in in your cala. So that doesn't do it. That doesn't. So that would have to be one, two, three, four, none of those are gonna do it. So let's do this 11. So these numbers aren't getting any smaller, so let's pick this six here. Up, oh, AI, man, AI just got three turns in a row, that's not good. <laughs> Oh, that's fine, because I can do this one like that, and that'll get me an extra turn. And then... Is 13 a smart play? Let's instead do... This 6. Wait, what? How did the AI just take 13 points away from me? What? What? 
Uh, okay, so there's also a rule here that at the last point ends up in an empty pit that you get all the points from the opposite side into your kala. Hmm. That explains a few things. Well, that's okay, because if I understand these rules correctly, I'm about to get 10 points. Yep. Well, also the one from there, so 11 points. Um, I don't think it's possible for me to win this, though, at this point, at this phase. Because I can go like that, and then like this. Then we can do one like that, two like that, then one like that again, and then... I think if I do this, I'll get this point as well, yeah. Okay, so that game ended with 31 me, 41 computer. So I was starting to figure it out in the long run there, but... So yeah, that was Kala. Um, we already played a game like this be once before. Um, this time, though, at least I understand what's going on with the rules, so the next time we see a game like this, I'll be better prepared for it. Because I got a funny feeling there's going to be more, given the fact that we've now encountered two games like this. But then it's, we're also how many episodes, how many weeks deep into this show? So, I don't know. Maybe we'll see another one. Maybe we won't. Either way, works for what it is. Would I pay $10 for it? Uh, I guess if you really like this kind of game. Next up from Retro Swim, we have Win Games backslash New Win 2 backslash Brick V16. Well, something to do with bricks. Um, where is it? Brick version 1.6. Um, we got WAV files, so it's going to be sound. Um, actually, that's odd. It's a bunch of WAV files that say MUS2, followed by something else. Also, this whole thing is 2 megs? What? Wait, I know what this is. <laughs> Okay, I think this is something, if I'm remembering correctly, this is something that I've actually played before. So it says here, what is Bricklayer for Windows? Bricklayer for Windows is a port of Steve Chamberlain's popular fast-paced falling blocks game for the Macintosh, also known as Tetris, because this is literally a Tetris clone. The Macintosh version was honorably mentioned in the 1993... Um, Mac user shareware awards and favorably reviewed in numerous books and magazines. Okay, so I'm gonna spare you all the read me here because this is literally just a Tetris clone, but it's a Tetris clone with some music. <laughs> and it says here the music wave files are copyright Opinic Opinicus Micro Technologies and may be freely distributed only as part of the Bricklayer for Windows game for use with by the Bricklayer executable. Interesting. Of course, the question is if it's even going to work properly. So let's see. Bricklayer. Okay, show it up fine. Um, kind of a small window. I don't remember it being that small, but whatever. Um, and this version apparently has the ability to record your gameplay so you can play it back for whatever reason. Um, you can change keys. So default keys are. K, J, L, space, and A? Really? <laughs> That's kind of weird. Okay, let's change it to... Let's change it to something a little more sane. Now, one thing I'm noticing here is that there's only one rotate key, so that's kind of annoying. I'm kind of used to how in real Tetris you have two rotate keys, one for clockwise, one for counterclockwise, but... So, we'll do Z there. Um, oh, <laughs> they have to be alpha keys. That's why it's, um, well, actually, I might be able to use numeric, key get away with the numeric keypad in that case. So I'll keep that one there. So can we actually do, yes, we can. We can use a numeric keypad with numlock on. So, and we'll do our push control like that. And spacebar can still be the drop key. Okay, and hopefully that works. <laughs> Maybe? <laughs> I don't know, that key, key altering thing was a little dubious. Um, it does support a 16 color mode, but we're not going to do that. Um, double size blocks. 
well, that's not going to work. <laughs> um, whoops. Uh, well, I can't. I was about to hit Alt Tab, but that's going to Alt Tab me out of the actual program, like the actual DOS box program. Um, <laughs> uh, this is a problem. Okay, I basically just had to restart DOSBox. Um, I'm going to guess that my keys didn't save. No, they didn't. So quickly readjust these. Are there any other preferences I should worry about here? Got load music, pause on lost focus. Oh, you can actually set how much debris to start with. Okay. Okay, so as soon as I hit begin game, we should start hearing music. Apparently there's some sound effects too, but it's kind of interrupting the music a little. It's just kind of weird. I don't remember that happening. It could just be an emulation thing. Well, I'm definitely ready for a long piece now, but I have to get it first. So, okay, that's weird. The um, control to make it go down faster without totally dropping it isn't working for whatever reason. Which is odd, but whatever. Um, it's, like, really refusing to give me a long piece. It's given me one long piece this entire play session so far. Okay, there we go. That was way too late. Oh yeah, sure, now it gives me two of them. Yeah, now because of all that... All that not Now because of all that nonsense with the long pieces, I'm having to... Recover now from all that, but whatever. Yes, the game actually moves at you <laughs> when you complete a level, which I don't know why they decided to use a cow mooing effect for clearing a level, but whatever. <laughs> so yeah, it's basically a Tetris clone, but with music that's actually fairly decent. Although it's kind of weird when you think about it, just the kind of music it is, because it's a little slow paced, but at the same time it has this sort of, I don't know, it's almost like the music they picked sort of fits a theme of like almost like a treasure hunt or something. Like that's the kind of feeling I get from it. Not just from the music, but from just the overall presentation. But that's not really what's going on. And again, this is just Tetris. Although I was able to clear up all that nastiness from before because of the lack of the lack of long pieces, so there you go. So yeah, that was Bricklayer. Uh, basically a Tetris clone started on the Mac, eventually came to Windows, and not bad for what it is. And our last dig for today from Elkovsky is DOS games backslash sports backslash NCAABB. I'm going to get some kind of basketball thing. Um, we got a 1992.bin, an executable, text file. Okay, the fact that there's a 1992.bin file there kind of has me thinking that maybe this is not actually a game. But we'll find out. Let's go edit bbncaa.txt. So, okay, everything's got quotes around it suggesting this would actually be printed in the program itself. So, NCAA Basketball Tournament Pool Software Instructions by uh, Fred Livermore. Hold down the shift and push print screen to print the delay displayed screen. So, the NCAA Basketball Tournament Pool Program is software for scoring on office pool. This program provides the user method... A provides the user a method to set up and print a pick sheet for players select winners from the field of 64 teams. Fast and easy way to enter each player's selections, up to 128 players. So basically this is a program so that if you want to do any kind of like <laughs> betting pools or stuff in an office setting, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's kind of kind of ridiculous, but that's apparently what we have here. Um, did the guy want any money for this thing? Okay, so there is information on how to register, but you have to choose the help option. Okay, so BBNCAA. And there we go. So, let's go to the help option just to see how much this guy wanted for this. 
twenty dollars. <laughs> uh, well, to be fair, I n I say that with alarming regularity on this show. To be fair, you go back to the early nineties, and the average person is not going to have a clue about this kind of computer stuff. So, being able to write a program that does something automatically that normally would take a lot more effort because you're doing it with like pen and paper and stuff like that kind of, that can be worth money to people so this wouldn't be worth twenty dollars by any stretch of the imagination nowadays but back then maybe it was so type x to exit help so n lets us enter data for a new pool so what's the name of this pool um pool it's the pool pool so enter the teams playing in the East region. Um, we got A, we got B, uh, points, uh, uh 55. <laughs> and then game two is going to be A versus C, and that's going to be 24. And we got A versus D, that's going to be 81. And then enter quit to exit without saving. What if I'm done entering teams? So I just... No. Do you want to change any of the teams scoring entered? No. Um, West region? I don't care. Although now I'm kind of wondering if what that 1992 file was, because clearly we just created a new one. At least I think I did. Uh, yeah, I just created the pool pool. <laughs> Which is almost the same size as the, um, the 1992 one. So let's, let's go back in here. Um, let's see, so we can do display results for which pool 1992, no file of that name found. Try again, yes. Maybe I have to actually put in the dot bin on that. So, um, let me see here. Okay, so, so enter one for East region results. List scores by name or point value. Eh, do it by name. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Whoever did this one was even more lazy than me in entering the data. <laughs> See, I don't doubt that this program does what it's supposed to, but the thing is, is that... Oh wait, it's not completely empty. <laughs> I, was about to, I was about to say, we got Duke, Campbell... Wait, those were the teams. Really? And we got Texas, Iowa... Oh, so there actually are some, well, some teams in this. Do you want to change any of the teams are scoring entered? No. Okay, so someone did make something of an effort here. So yeah, I don't doubt that this program would actually do what it's supposed to, but the thing is, is that there's only so much I can demonstrate without spending like an hour entering information that doesn't exist. <laughs> Like, I mean, if I really wanted to, like, if I was really into this kind of thing, I could go back in time and just look up all the stats for with some old set of games from, like, 92 or 93 or something and punch all that data in and then, like, see how this would sort that. But I don't think that would be too interesting. So, whatever.